Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our Fedora Alliance <laughs> site workshop uh, event. So uh, we would like to discuss about how to make our, uh, how can I say, we are basically remaking our Fedora shop in a better way. So this is a workshop session, so this won't go YouTube. If you would like to join us or talk about us, feel free to do that, because this is just going to be talking about brainstorming and coding in the 15 minutes. Uh, a little bit of a housekeeping. Uh, we share the links in the chats. Uh, this link is basically shows you how to set up a couple of your stuff if you would like to new in this area. If you'd like to join us at the, at the coding or check it out or run it yourself, uh, we can help you through. Uh, some requirements exist. I think uh, Ashton would like to talk about it a bit more about uh, knowledge case stuff because we are not here to teach you uh, the very basics of uh, certain stuff. So we have to assume that you know some, uh, have an experience at least with uh, JavaScript and Vue.js and a couple of technologies we'd like to talk about it. So Ashton, would, uh, would you like to also introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. So, so I'm Ashlyn. I'm uh, one of the developers in the web and apps team as well. And uh, I fo mostly focus on front end stuff. I've been doing a lot of uh, testing between the different frameworks and uh, different architectures that we've been looking at for building our new websites. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm really excited about the session because we're taking something. It's it's still pretty hot in the oven, right? We're still really uh, developing it and getting the nuts and bolts put together. But uh, just to be able to show kind of where we're at with our process and uh, hopefully build some interest and see if there's anybody else that would like to be participating with us. Um, so part of that here, I just wanted to pull up the repo and let everyone see what's going on there. Let's see. Let's we're on screen too. Yeah, that's what we're well, in the meanwhile. Let me also introduce myself for just a second because I forgot to say my name and stuff. Oh, you didn't do that uh, no, I didn't do that. No, no, you can share your skin. That's okay. My name is also Omar, but I'm also a Federal Website and Application Teams member, slash Federal Mindshare web, Website and Application Team representative, also doing a bunch of other stuff. But right now, I'm just a, a, a website guy. That's all. <laughs> just the website guy. Yeah. Just the website guy. Yeah, pretty much the same. <laughs> All right, okay. Let me just uh, pull this repo up. So this is the the, the website's three point repo. Um, it's it's where we're we're working on uh, ironing out the kinks of of our architecture before we go and do it for reals and uh, a different repo that we'll be doing once once we've uh, locked everything down. Uh, so this is a fantastic place if you're looking to learn or get into the websites team. If you want to see like the kind of the stickiness of what's going on there, you are definitely more than welcome to. We are looking for people to join in and work with us, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We picked Vue.js because it's fairly simple to use compared to React and some of the other frameworks. It has a, we're, and we're working on making a workflow that feels fairly natural for vanilla web development, but leveraging some new technologies. Uh, so this is the repo. And we'll just take a look here. There's client and Nux site. Uh, um, actually, so if, if you yes, yeah. excuse, can I add something extra if you don't mind? Oh yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, when we are doing this uh, session, we have to also say I think one more thing. Uh, make this some stuff simplified. Uh, we are renovating all of our websites. This is why we do use these technologies and decisions and uh, other ideas. So this is basically our ideas coming, getting live. And basically, if you want to jump in into the federal website team to do exactly the hard work, the fun work, coding work, uh, if you're interested in the programmer uh, section, uh, feel free to reach us as well. Uh, so that was the at least the basic idea. Why are we doing this session as well? Um, sorry to say, sorry to not to say it in the beginning, but I would like to uh, feel that we have to mention it, Ashton. I think you know people need to know why are we doing this. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess it's it might not be as common of knowledge that we're rebuilding all the websites. Yeah, so so really quick here, the, this is the repo. Um, the difference between client and Nux site. This is from an earlier stage when we were looking between using vanilla Vue.js and Nuxt, which is a framework built on and around Vue. Uh, it automates a lot of like the uh, file system routing, uh, the static site generation, things like that. So 
initially we were do, working with just Vue, and that's where this was going to be client, and we were going to have we were considering having a fast API Python server, and that that's just why this looks like this. So if you're going to jump in and start using this repo, you'll want to CD into the Nux site folder and do your npm work in there. Uh, we've got some basic setup stuff. So if you look on the README here, uh, the the commands that you're going to need to know. Um, some of the extensions if you're using VS Code or VS Codium, anything that you might need there. We've got that, uh, so that should get you going. And you can check out the admin panel and the test deploy, which doesn't look like too much yet. It's just uh, us nailing down the design system on the home page, but there's, there's more behind that, but that's all right. And then if you're looking for more educational resources, we've started to put together this wiki. And those are the links that Honor Alp shared with you. So if you're new to Vue, if you're new to <clears throat> JavaScript-based web development, uh, anything like that, we've got this Getting Started page, which is really helpful. It'll help you uh, get your repo set up, show you how to run code, uh, get you to your next steps, make sure that you've got Node installed and Git installed. Um, yeah, so a very, very basic primer. And then if you want to start getting more into the uh, the meat of things, this is going to be a lot of the content that we're covering today. It's going to be kind of an educational session here. This component props, which also gets a little bit into slots, and we'll cover that in just a few minutes here. But this gives some code snippets on the basic fundamentals that you'll need to be able to understand to get working with this. And then if you're more interested in the CMS side of things, we've been using Netlify CMS and we're gonna go and talk about that as well. Uh, but um, if you wanna be able to work on it locally and experiment it with it, here's some setup notes. And then uh, this is gonna be a stage here. There's uh, We've got some more work to do on how we render our data. Uh, so we're gonna be doing a bit of a brute force method while we lock down our working with the Mongo queries. And you'll see that with uh, the next content module documentation. But for the stuff that we're doing right now, this this will give you a bit of an overview of how you can just start pulling the data from the CMS, which is Git based. And uh, yeah, so that, that's it for our documentation. Um, if you're tr experimenting with this, and are using this and you're finding any issues, please feel free to uh, create an issue list or an issue in the list here. Um, if you're interested in uh, CMS and Mongo query syntax, which is kind of a new thing for our team with uh, working with this particular CMS, I've created this issue here as a workspace for people to be able to jump in and comment and we can start working on in this space. So. We're all ready to rock and roll there. Oh, and that's the, uh, let's, all right, let's do this without doing that too much. Cool. All right, back over to you, Honor Um, uh, uh, I think there is uh, one more part I would like, we would like to discuss about is um, uh, when we are renovating our websites, uh, I think uh, before we go one more section, uh, let me try to share my screen as well on, one certain situation. Second. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Okay, cool. So uh, we, I would like to also discuss about um, uh, one more situation in, in addition to Netlify, uh, Netlify which is that uh, I would like to showcase our content management. So let me share the screen. Uh, can you see it, Ashton, as well? Oh, by the way, I can't hear you. Oh, yeah, you can. I can. Oh, okay, now I can hear you, too. Okay. So uh, in this page, uh, Ashton, also please help me out in, in certain situation. Uh, this page is basically going to be our uh, content management. We're going to create uh, pages, additions. As you can see, we have some context. We have some uh, data inside of it, and some uh, let's say some sections. Like if you have an image, you can add an image. If you want to call an action or page sections, so we have this all of these uh, extra 
collections and pages. It helps us to basically to manage our content in a much more nice way. Basically, the person uh, who wants to control the website or change the content, it doesn't require to know the coding skills. You can easily change from here and save it. It will create a history, which is good, good, automatically going to create a git commit. It's also cool than cool because uh, we will also see what changed, what happens. And if the changes become so much more, we can even try to make them squash it to make it, you know, much more cl clean history if you would like to. And that's also give us so much advantage in this in this area. So uh, Netlify is also good in this uh, situation. And then it also uh, creates some extra, uh, how can I say, uh, advantages to us, I guess, going to be proper for proper work. So today um, we would like to try to work on and flock to Fedora. I will try to work on a bit more, then I will switch to the other section. I will try to cover up uh, some of the technologies, some of the style, coding types I'm going to do. If I, may, if I make a mistake, Ashton, you are my basically police. You have to warn me, find my, what am I, what the heck am I doing wrong? If I crash the code, don't worry. Uh, it's just being me. And, you know, JavaScript is not always the cool cool thing. You know, every type is object, so you don't like it sometimes. You know how it's called. Oh, totally. And, uh, Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I'm going to switch the screen again to share my uh, visual code, do some bit of a changes, try to refresh onto the page uh, when it's become visible. So I think we can start about. Uh, you can also help me on help me out on a bit of a Netlif Netlify situation uh, to uh, control the content. Uh, so we so basically the idea is in this uh, in this first section. I'm going to create a basic uh, a view component to create some variables and connect these variables with, uh, with, uh, with variables, which means I'm saying props. Then we will also try to pull the data from the Netlify and try to update this data uh, on uh, so when we update it, we're going to update our content from the Netlify. Basically, my static content is going to be become a dynamic content and controlled by the Netlify. I think I explained. Ashley? Yeah, 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 definitely. And there's just a question here that Sam asked in the Q and A. Sure. Uh, they said the current website looks all right. Is there any particular reason for the redesigns? And that's a really good question. Uh, there, there's a couple. There's um, some some of the pages need a bit of a refresh, um, as decided by the design team. And we've got a lot of designers coming in that are looking at new and interesting ways to display the content as the community grows and as our events and everything are getting bigger and uh, just more I complex. Think, I think I think we can also say that, sorry, if I, if I interrupt you, please continue. Because yeah, yeah, just, just let me finish on that. So, and yeah, there's just a lot of new design talent coming in. So we've got a bunch of pages that have been given some refreshed designs that are, a little bit more to some modern Saturns, but that that's just the visual side of it. The back end side is that the maintainability of our current sites, they're not the most accessible for new contributors to be able to work on. Um, and and just some of some of the tasks that with more modern technologies would be really easy to do. They just take a lot more effort. So yeah. Plus uh, I think we have to say that uh, easy navigation, we would like to have it because our, we have a lot of websites. People can even lost in there. That's why we would like to bring easy navigation, easy accessibility, maybe, hopefully, quote unquote, a surprise, surprise, maybe dark mode, you know, if you want to see your eyes in the night, in the middle of the night. You know, people doesn't like always see the white pages. That's kind of one of the ideas. Thinking about it, of course, needs to be finalized. More, yeah. more mobility friendly is also one of the reasons. So, yes. Current website looks okay, but one more important piece I think we have to say, Ashley. Mm -hmm. uh, we have we are not just creating federal workstation or server or CoreOS or Silver. We have much more additions. So we would we would like to make sure that all of them is can accessible and have same same quality uh, same level of uh, accessible quality content. So we so we would like to basically and make them make sure that not put them some other um, top domains. We'd like to, you know, bring them all together in a much more easy navigation. So if you want to go workstation, the navigation is going to be much more easier. Or if you want to go uh, to KDA, for example, myself, I'm using it. 
So we have you're gonna access much more easier because to be honest with you, every single new user is asking this. How do I find other like is is there a better TDA edition exist? Because the main website doesn't show that in clear way. It's just in the bottom of the page and it's not cool. So we yeah, would like to change these kind of problems as well. So uh, yeah. some some of them is aesthetics, some of them is old technology, and some of them is definitely uh, we are growing and we have multiple variables of uh, deliverabilities, and we would like to make sure that everything has equal level of accessibility and access, easy access to the website as well. I think that's also important. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I think that covers everything. And on that note, I was wondering if you'd be able to open up the configuration file for the CMS that you've got the front end for just as our entry point to getting into the uh, the work and the code here, just so people could see what the data is structured like. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. sure. Uh, let me switch down. Okay, I think this is pretty much as it is. And this is the media, just a tiny eye candy show. So sure, this is easy upload, go and easy like a WordPress style. So that's why we are using this one as well. And I think this is pretty much is covered this page for now. Let me stop sharing my screen and go to share my other screen. And let's talk about a bit more code mode. OK, is it visible? Yep. Cool. And let, let me change my screen control a bit more uh, because I have so much going on on my screen. Let me make sure that it's fine and nice. Okay, I think. Yeah, it's a little narrow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you know, splitting screen, uh, tiling management. I'm just cheating at the moment. Broken That's my, fair. yeah, broken my stuff. So, uh, you said content Netlify stuff, right? Let's go here. Down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Start with the in public. So yeah, down. Uh, down. Uh, and then at so public admin. Admin config. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. the winner. Okay. So uh, could you please care to uh, explain this one to us? Because yeah, um... so so a, p a part of this system is we want we wanted a CMS that we'd be able to have really good control over that we wouldn't have too much overhead or anything. So this brings us into a Git based workflow, and this is the configuration file. So all those those fields that Honor Alp was just showing you, those are all set up right here using this YAML file where we can describe what types of fields we want, what we want them to be named, if they're required or not, they all have options that we can do. And uh, so it gives us a really flexible approach for our developers to be able to create a foundation where newer contributors that maybe have less tech experience or our content writers, which like the skill set needed to be a, a content writer, like a blog writer or a web page writer or designer, it might not really require you to be a strong coder. So this allows us to separate those things a little bit uh, while making it really easy with YAML to be able to get into writing. Like this isn't a very obscure or abstract uh, type yeah. of system as far as that goes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you. And, that, and, that, that, and, and since I agree with you all the time, that's why you are my best teammate as well. Oh, you're my best teammate too. So, you, so one last, the very, very last thing on that, if you could hop down to content and just show what the data for flock looks like. Yeah, there's sure. that content okay. folder right above docs on your left in your left hand side. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, just one tiny note can we add? Uh, yeah. Controlling Netlify also very easy. All we have to do is I learned it from uh, from Ashlyn and others. Is that just put this Netlify JS link? You all good to go. And it's also easy to configure. I love this. Thank you very much. You make my life easier as well. That's so, cool. Uh, documentation. Is it documentation, right? Oh, no, content. It's just above. Oh, content. OK, good. Blog, YAML. So this is the content. And in the control by the Netlify, uh, right? Yeah. OK. So this is the content. Basically, we are controlling over Netlify. Then if you change here or to Netlify or in the code, I mean, technically we can change in the code, right? Yeah, yeah, you can just edit stuff right here. Oh, okay, you so can you just type your name it. over there and it's going to be done, right? So yeah. next flock location is going to be Ashton House, maybe? Yeah, yeah, welcome to Calgary, <laughs> Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> sure, perfect. All right, all right, all right. I like it, I like it. Uh, uh, if you want to add something? Um, no, it's uh, just I just wanted everyone to be able to see this. Uh, so when you're mm -hmm. accessing these fields, it's 
you know, the way that we're doing it, that brute force way I was talking about, is just go iterating through the series of arrays and objects to get to the, the basically the string data for our URLs for images and then the text content. So it makes it pretty like easy to access. Yeah, basically when you go to the next site, you will see content page blog and then you have index file. I think my and it's such a small yeah. Yeah. And yeah. but also the, the the file structure we have sorry folder structure we have is also easy. So we can pretty much find it. So every edition is basically lives in under edition or ABC, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. So let me back to put this one to here because this is my basically debug screen. If it is crashed, I know it's crashed. <laughs> so Ashley, uh, do you think should I go for a uh, flock to federal website and try to copy this content to, to exactly full section and put on the hero FP hero and try to customize it together, then, you know, let's do some bit of a work. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds fantastic. OK, so I'm going to copy this content. Oh, by the way, uh, let's just, uh, yeah, let's, let's, show it. let's just show it after I copy it for creating stuff. So I'm going to copy this section and file this hero section. And I'm going to put it in uh, FP hero, I think. But you have a card. Should I create a new? Oh, you so can you... use FP here. I don't. I don't think oh. there's anything really in it. Is there? No, yeah. it's not. It just has a slot and header, which is nothing. So I'm just gonna, uh, you know, remove this, and mm -hmm. you know, put everything's over there. I think it's gonna be. Yeah, I just have a banner, and or alert. Yeah, I, I can just remove this. Put it over here. Yeah, yeah you're good. Yeah, and so this one is. Uh, this to do is can stay there for a while. I'm not gonna touch it. Um, so next thing is, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the way you mentioned to me, uh, we can do a little bit of a, how can I say, uh, cheesy, uh, where, where that, uh, I think FP, if, as far as I remember, uh, I'm just going to, uh, okay, FP card, yeah. And you had FP card uh, up proud. So can I can I can I bring this one to as well? Um yeah yeah you can use that. Yeah I'm just gonna change it of course I'm just gonna showcasing that some of them exist. So if you wanna know our structure I'm just gonna copy it because we don't have to reinvent and rewrite everything all together. Yeah so th this is like getting into one of the strengths that we're gonna have with using view this way is that we can we can create these reusable components that are flexible and and then our pages can are basically just compositions of the components where we take data from our CMS, pass it through the page into the components, and that way we get like consistent styling, and it again makes it easy to to collaborate on. Right now, we're at the stage of building out the components and making them hardened and ready for that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm just going to say title string. It's going to be string. So this title is going to be here. So we would like to make sure this one is goes there so we can control this one. Uh, uh, let's just say sub title, I guess. It'll be fine. And we have a big image hero. I'm going to use that as a put to image things back to over here, I believe. Mm -hmm. And OK, of course, it's com complaining about the thing. I'm going to bring. Uh, and also, um, I think dates are also very important. But I'm going to make it a string for now. But later then, we may want to change this into date to make sure that localization convert also possible. Yeah. I don't want to make this too complicated for now. I'm just going to say date string, but we definitely would like to. Oh. Uh, what am I? Am I missing something extra for now? Uh, it's gonna be fine uh but i think we have um uh hatch image actually let me just say image hatch think image uh for think uh what i mean by that um actually knows what for explanation section is oh there's a person who wants to join okay hop in 
Uh, I think the way I would like to say is uh, Arch and Flock is going to be our left end in, in our website. Ah, by the way, I forgot to mention it. We all do. Ashton, could you share the pen pot link so they can know what the heck I'm talking about? Oh my goodness. Yeah, definitely. Um... Yeah. Uh, and since you're doing that, I'm doing the other work in the same time. So let's do multi yeah. um, Okay, I am going to be done with this. Save it. Uh, it was fine, I believe. I'm just going to use. Uh... Uh, Daniel, that's okay. By the way, if you want to join us, sure, you can join us. Like, this is a workshop. So, this is not going to go to YouTube. If you're a like camera shy, don't be. Be all here, friendly. Workshop doesn't go YouTube. So uh, let's just say that. It's a, a pretty much fair warning. <laughs> yeah. And so, so I just want to comment about something with the way that props are being used in this particular version. So this is good because it allows it, this is allowing us to pass uh, information to this and use it. How the one difficult thing, though, and this will be something that I think we can get into with an optimized phase, is mm -hmm. that the uh, the props that are being used here are very very flock specific. So likely this this particular component in its current version would really be like an FP flock hero, right? But but yeah. it's good because this way we we can get from that level to that level of abstraction and then we can look at generalizing it a little bit further because i know the flock hero has a couple different elements and layout patterns than the um the workstation one and some of the others so and that's that's going to be when we when we get into looking at card design we'll explore that with uh, the use of slots both are, are really valid and useful ways of setting up your components to be reusable okay i'm just getting the the prototype link uh, by the way, can I just put uh, directly into the class, inside of the class, to put the props over here, or should I have to put it in the inside of the... Um... I can check this one class stuff, because I share, I put a title string over here, but it's like a string. Should I have to put it inside of this, this area? Or you leave you it need the double mustache syntax around title string. You like this? Uh, no, 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 like... Um... I can't type it. I'm... Ah, right, sure. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I, I have to do this so it will become a variable. I remove this stuff. And oh, not that. You. So basically, that's done. And this one is required going to be uh, a URL, but I'm going to look into it later on. And I'm going to change this one. So we have this August 5 to 3 space. Like that. So uh, we have uh, some basic foundation, and let's just save it at the same time. And let's go here. And then what we can do is uh, we can basically create our FB draw, I guess. Yep, and you can do it as a self closing tag. <clears throat> And my auto completion doesn't work. Fantastic. Supposed to do the this thing, but it doesn't do the way I wish to do. Oh, darn. And I'm gonna this. I don't need a V car. I'll do this for now. Um, yeah, I would recommend yeah just to to do it as self closing, uh, because because it doesn't take it. This one doesn't take any slots, so it doesn't really have any content to go physically inside. So mm -hmm. if you're to do something along those lines, and oh, then you you're gonna have a whole, yeah, you're gonna have a whole bunch of props to pass to it, so it'll yeah. take less space that way. Yeah, true, 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 true. No problem. Um. Let me check my content. Basically, gonna work. 
Uh, I just lost uh, two stuff. Okay, uh, so let me share my uh, screen. Same time, so we can observe that is it working or not? Quickly. So this is the current look on the uh, on the flock website. So I just moved this big blue section. There was supposed to be have a date, but since I didn't use the props, so that doesn't comes up within. But if I add uh, a props and give a parameter, uh, I think we can provide it manually as well for uh, quick showcasing it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so like, if I want to do that, Ashton, how do you how do I pass the props? Uh, so you're going to use what's called a vbind. And the, the syntax for that, so the, the, the easy way, inside of your component, you'd go like fp hero, and then what's what's the title of the prop that you want to use? Is it date string? Uh, date string, let's just say, yeah. I'm going to copy it in here. This one, for example. Yeah. So you could do that, and then maybe well, let's just pass it the string directly. We'll say, um, yeah. In that case, actually, you don't need to bind it because we have no data on this end. So we'll go date string um, August 4th to 6th, 2022. It would look, look along those lines. Yep, exactly. Let me copy this one. Um, also, put this one over here. So I just add the props. I didn't change my hero. All I'm going to have to do is F5 the page. And yeah, it's already there. Now, how about this? What if we wanted to take the data from the CMS and add it? Yeah, instead let's of do, writing so, it directly. OK, so this time I'm going to have to stop sharing and go back to code. Let's do it again and do it again. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Um, share my screen, share my screen, share my code, share my code, here's my code. So this is right now, how does it look like? So we're going to have to change this one into access the page. So I can, so let's remove this one for now. So we're going to access to, uh, OK, I think uh, we have to do wait. Oh, no, you want it in quotations. Uh, double quotation? Just regular quotes, yeah. And uh, you're going to want to put the, the colon at the front of the word date string. Uh, so it'd be like yeah. Colon I, didn't, date I didn't. I didn't understand it. Yeah. Right. Sure. This one, right? Yeah. And actually, so, you should just just leave it at data, just so they can see what what spits out from that. Oh, I'm I'm curious. Uh, sure. Let me share my screen. It's gonna be a fantastically long. <laughs> uh, it is very long. This this is our our brute force stage that we're at. Yeah, that looks amazing. So I need here. I I need this one. Yeah. So I'll, all I have to do is I need to select the array, go to the title, and but in order to do that, I need to make sure, of course, uh, I I I, ch I choose the wrong one. Actually, no, I didn't. I choose the date, uh, the title, but if I remove that and save it again. So what was it? Uh, is it? Uh, I need to go detail title, I guess. But I need to check this one into flock. Mm, yeah, yeah. Details than detail and the first one. And there are too many details, so which means I have to go car detail along this line. Am I wrong? Or uh, no, you're you're right. I'm detail. happy we're doing this. Like we haven't. This CMS structure is still in progress, so seeing what it's like to access the variables and if it's comfortable, intuitive, or if we're hitting sticking points, that's kind of what I was hoping we could get out of this session as well. Yeah, and um, wait, I just typed data, dot, data, the first data in the zero array and dot details, dot details zero, and, and I, how many details do we have? Oh, no, you need, a, you need to get into header. Oh, so it's header data oh. zero dot header. I, I missed that. Header. Um, okay, so I oh header. So I got header. Header has title. Okay, I'm in. Uh, I'm still getting into this. this. 
where am I? I mean headers. Okay, I just say data zero headers and dot detail. I need to go there directly. And it's an array, but no, not this one. This one is the array side. Yeah, so details. And I select detail zero. Mm -hmm. And this is the pretty much I have, but it doesn't update it. Let me update it. Oh, okay. It cannot find details. I must be missing something. Let me copy this one out to so refresh it. Uh, come back over here. So, okay, I said headers and then details. I have to check my YAML again. I'm pretty sure I said detail. It's true, yeah. And it's still failing. Yeah. So, something that I, I found with, with this part of the workflow, what's useful is just to take that whole thing and dump it into a JSON beautifier. Just to uh, just to get it so that you can visualize the hierarchy a little bit better, because when it's nested like this, it's kind of a pain to look at. Yeah, let me do that too as well. I'm, gonna, I'm okay. So, Jason B to fire. Let's go. Let's go. It's not valid because wait, what does it mean? It's not valid. Did I copy wrong? Okay, this one. Okay, I got. Uh, parentheses to parentheses. Yeah, I should be fine, Emily. Uh, let me actually check on my end as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did it. So let me let me try it again. JSON is fire. Sounds good. And while you're doing that, I'm just in my own editor to just seeing if I can access that property pro easier. Yeah, okay, I did it. And as you can see, header, title, subtitle. But let me change my screen as well so you can see it. Uh, window, that, and this. And let's go to the YAML. We are in header, as we mentioned, details, and getting the first detail zero. Oh, I have to also take title as well. So, and I have to do this, right? I guess. If I don't miss it, let me see. Uh, okay, it's it's giving me a, uh, it's not reading the zero, so yay. So basically, this data coming from Netlify, and basically, I got the Netlify data, so actually, I'm just going to change to the YAML file, so I don't need to touch this structure anymore. I'm done with that. So I'm go cancel this one. So I'm just going to say 2023. It's going to change the number. Yeah, you can see, just see. Uh, I'm just going to say, uh, hello, guys. In fact, what the heck would I want? So I'm basically playing with Netlify YAML file. Um, it just gives me the proper uh, stuff I'm supposed to do. So this is basically. We, uh, we basically move entire header hero, getting it over to, uh, to to components, and we just add the props and control these props with Netlify. And basically, now let's just say none of us is here, and someone has to change the content and just log into the Netlify, change the state, and we don't have to even know anything. Uh, hello, Katyan. By the way, Ashton, I can't hear you. Oh, right. Sorry, I keep pushing the, the button so I, you don't hear my clickities. Okay, how many times did you talk when I was talking to her? Am I missing something? Probably a lot. No, no, no. I was probably just making, like, random commentary. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so uh, do you want to take over the last part? So share yeah, let's, let's let's hop down and do cards. Because I'm, I'm really liking the uh, workflow with slots because we'll, we'll be able to do this with the hero later. And so I can show some of that. Uh, would I be able to steal the screen from you? Uh, so do you want to screen? I'm stopping because. Yeah. Or should, okay, you, you shave. I'll, I'll, be the, I'll be the watcher this time. Sounds good. I'm just going to move you all to that screen so we don't end up in a tunnel. That screen, which means I'm going out? Hi. Hi. Okay. All right. So I have not pulled this. Um, we'll, we'll deal with the get stuff later. But 
just to, yeah. to recap, like looking at from where we started, bef the initial stage, all of this would have had to have been on the flock Actually, page. Actually, your and screen, sh you, you stopped sharing. You stopped sharing. Oh, did I? Yes, you did. Oh, my goodness. I wonder what but how I did that. Uh, it, it's it's a crazy button. The world has changed crazy too much. Button. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, you can remove the hero section for now. You know what? We can. I I, I can just send a comment, and you know, it will be easy. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pull it in. It'll be easy. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like this entire thing now is reduced to one line where you all you have to worry about is passing the information to it, and that can really like improve our maintainability. And that that's it's just so lovely. Um, so down here, I want to show you this card section. And this is all it is now. Uh, and I've already worked through this. And so, so we'll, we'll do a bit of a walkthrough here. But if, if we think of this as being like, we're just basically making our own custom HTML tags that Actually, have like strong, yeah? Sorry, can you zoom a bit like me? Because the screen is kind of maybe problematic to some individuals. Let's make sure it's all readable for tiny text can be a problematic. Just a uh, friendly reminder. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, is that easier to see? For me, it's fantastic. And if if anyone has a trouble in the chat, please write it. We all open it because we want to make sure it's all easy to readability. Yeah, continue. Yeah, we can do that. Let's do some a bit more coding. All right. So so how I've set this up is I've made an FP card component, its image component, um, a title. Like I've I've just made these all as separate, very small components. Um, and they they would be considered dumb components or uh, functional. Well, they're not quite functional components, but they're they're close. Crazy so components. Look at yeah, but like like so, where you were passing props, and that was your main focus. Like if we look here, the only prop that I passed is the image URL and the image alt tag. Everything else, we're rendering this inside of this component the way that you would with normal HTML, but we're stripping out all of that excess styling. So we don't need to look at that here. We just need to be worried about the content. And so the way that we're able to do that is by mixing props and slots together. So if I hop over to the components, so we see here how I have these card components and I've got a bunch of little pieces for them. So let's start at the top and work our way inwards. This is it. Here is our card component. It is not very exciting. Uh, all it's doing is taking, creating some top-level styling, uh, the flex. We're, we're using Tailwind CSS, by the way, so if you're confused about this, like, crazy utility class thing, which I know isn't the nicest to look at, but, like, it's really nice to work in. Uh, and then this slot, what this basically does is if I use it like a, um, if I if I use it not like a single tag the way that we did with FP component like this, where, where it's self-closing, the slot will take any information that you put inside of it. So if we look here, all that slotted information is this content going inside of the card, which is handling the outer level flexbox styling. Exactly. Uh, and then so if we take a look at the image, because this is where we're mixing props and slots together, Oh no, the image is just props, sorry. No, it's there, just a there's prop, no yeah. slots because it's an image, right? Uh, but so the image is taking the props because it needs to, right? Like we want to be passing this information in, into it. Um, so we, we have it bound to image URL, image alt. We could also do this just as image and, uh, and set it as an object instead of two separate strings and pass it as the object. The trick with that is that... Um, you need to make sure that your naming conventions are more consistent, and this makes it a little bit uh, prove like secure against if um, some so somebody made it with like they used URL for the naming convention internally, and then when the, they they pass like a, a variable to it, an object to it far into the future, and say they change the name URL to link, that could cause some rendering issues and just really stupid bugs that you don't want to have to deal with. Uh, so I've always I've always gone this route and just like having a little bit more explicit. You can go either way. I might be thinking about what have, have about the image situation, by the way, before the event start before the talk started. 
Oh yeah, I fixed the image issues. So yeah, you get I the see. images to render. And this this is another thing we're kind of like in um as we're in this earlier phase of the process. Uh, this is what we're having to add, add this little string, this config at base URL, <laughs> uh, which we thank our team member Nico for uh, figuring that out because um, from the CMSs but, I've worked with before, it was a bit different. But I think we should be we should be supposed to do that. No, this this is like a, a fix for now, but just the same yeah. way that like in the long run, we're not going to have to be accessing our information in this manner. Yeah, we're um, doing this zero zero. It's kind of long. Yeah, we need we need to fix the other problem. I didn't look into it. I'm sorry. I have to check this one later on. As no, well. it's totally cool. That's that that's a tomorrow issue, right? Uh -huh. um, but for, for right now, it's a quick and easy way to get into it, just so we can start templating. Yeah. And what we're we're doing here, because if you, we hop over to the page, um, which one are you? Let me just get that page over here. There's the winner. No, oh, okay. Well, I will open Firefox. <laughs> Browser problem. Oh. Okay, so yeah, you can see I'm like really just dumping data on the page to look at it. Um, so so this is the, the structure of them right now. And we have three of them being rendered, but we've only written it out once. And that's because uh, Vue has this nice V4 syntax, which I think is fairly accessible. Like we could do really crazy ways with... Um, JavaScript has lots of ways to loop through things, but I think this is just nice and well spelled out. But what we're doing is we're looking into the cards, which this object, as we saw earlier, that's an array with three cards in it. And it just uh, generates the meets there. So if we were to do this again, let's um, just play with it. We'll go FP card. FP, not F card. I know. I really wanted to make make our prefix um, f but i know no no weird. no 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 you cannot i don't i didn't allow you to do that it's forbidden you know the reasoning i know i know i'm just i'm just saying uh so let's go um let's let's copy this out again we'll we'll just do this twice so that you can see yeah what the the flow is so we're we're looping through uh our our cards it's now going to give mm -hmm. us an, an issue because of the end tag. So let's give it its end tag. Mm -hmm. That makes it happy. Now, if we go take a look at that, now we've got all these other cards that are like, what the heck? Now there's six of them. But we have, because that top level is only a slot, it's not going to show anything. It doesn't know what it's meant to describe. So we could just be like, for each one, we can go. And now it's going to loop that. So let, let's do something a little more interesting with it. Let's try getting, let's duplicate this image. Oh my. And now we've got our uh, little icon things that we have these gradients set up. Oh no, th those are those are just set up. In these the are images, image, right? image, yeah, that's an image. Yeah, I did couldn't remember if I had done that because those are font awesome icons. I couldn't remember if I did that with Tailwind or if I just pulled it from the design, but I did pull it from the design. Um, so we're going yeah, to so we make, we make all the logos CSS, right? Yeah, why not? Like, let's have some fun with it. We're playing with gradients and Tailwind is a great time. 3D? Um, <laughs> hmm? Make it 3D maybe so you can turn it around. Oh, we could do that. Yeah, we can. Well, it's, uh, it's, anyway. Continue, please. So, so if we look at this FP card title, let's just have a peek at what it's doing. It's again like we're not I didn't do these ones as props because passing a lot of data, it just like in my experience sometimes if, if it just needs to be a text thing like this, it's a lot more intuitive just to work with it the way you normally would. Mm -hmm. So so that's what we're gonna do. So and and this is there's a kind of a trick here that we're getting that stops us from having to deal with too much of this like super long string thing. Because we're in a, a for loop, we're going card in this ridiculous big old object or, or array, sorry. 
it's an array. So that means any individual one, we only have to use the term card to iterate through. And then from there, we just have to make sure that our, our um, the uh, objects that we're accessing or the keys that we're accessing are right. So if we go card, we're going to just get all the information. And that's not very useful to us. But if we go card dot title, uh, okay. then we get that. We can go. Uh, let's just take a look at card and what's one of the other values? Subtitle. Let's, let's Subtitle, throw that one. In. Yeah. But it's it's in a title space, so it's unlike here, right, where we have the actual title. It's now just inheriting the styles from our custom uh, object that we made. So we can leave it at title. And then what we can do is get rid of that other dot, because that's not very helpful. And we can add our fp card, FP card. dot text. Yeah, it's, 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 it will show the same thing. Yeah, and then and then if we do our now here's where the, I forgot the the call to action. That's where we're blending slots and props. So let's use that one and that'll be uh, the end of this bit of a demo here. So if we go FP card action, we want to bind the URL equals to card. Oh, let's do that inside of there. Card.cta.url. And then boom, it's very, very easy to generate all this, very little work, and it takes up a lot less lines of code, which is a win, isn't it? Um, and just to, to show you what that call to action looks like here, so here we can see for the URL, we're taking our string in the prop, and we're binding it to href, to the link, so whatever we, whatever we name this, this just has to be named like that there, and then when we refer to it, we just need to make sure we're saying, the URL needs to be this value. We could get rid of the semicolon and write out um, like a direct one, but then direct we're going to yeah. Yeah, lose the power of our v4 loop. And I think this is nice because we don't have to we don't have to construct too many data objects, right? So if you're wanting to kind of keep it low key on the JavaScript, you only need to have as much as is necessary. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. this is still JavaScript, but we wouldn't have to do this. We could do this as just static text as well. And that makes it really nice and smooth. Yep. Uh, so and that's how also, we get cards. Yeah, we have also have one minute left. If there is any questions, let's just take them as well. Yeah, yeah. Please, are there I mean, any questions? And there's yeah. I mean, uh, if not, uh, we can end it. No. Um, so. Those of you that are here, did you guys enjoy the session? I hope that you learned some information. I'm not sure if there's anybody with view experience, but I hope that you found it cool. And thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Let's wait a minute. Uh, if not, uh, we can end it. I guess not. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you around. Bye.